friends, Queen of Flannel here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a surprise Saturday uh, video. So um, I'm trying uh, some different days with my schedule. I want to see how videos on the uh, the weekends do compared to, you know, during the during the week um, before I launch into the uh, the project here. Um, so at one point I was eligible to monetize the, the channel, but I didn't feel like I was like legitimately had a shot at it. Um, I still get the majority of my, my views on the, uh, tips and tricks for underpainting with markers from like a year and a half ago. And I know that, uh, there have been some other people in the past that said that's like one of the things that YouTube looks at when they um, monetize, you know, select people for monetization is, uh, you know, is there a, a decent distribution in views uh, across, uh, you know, an average of your, your videos. So I, uh, I held off and just, you know, kept plugging along and uh, unfortunately, you know, with the gap that I took around the holidays, it dropped my, um, my numbers below the eligibility. So I am no longer eligible to apply for monetization. Not that that's like a huge, like, oh my God, that's the only reason that I'm doing this. Cause it's not, you know, um, there's lots of reasons, but, uh, I am trying to work back to that. And, uh, just looking at the numbers on the, uh, the videos that I have released, you know, over the past couple of months and just trying to figure out YouTube's algorithm and whatnot. Um, yeah. So anyways, uh, I did a flip through of this book. Uh, I'll pop a link to the video in the, uh, the corner there if you're interested in seeing the full flip through and I talked about wanting to work in this book and uh, I was hanging out in uh, Ryan Colors uh, his live the uh, the other night and uh, I'll link to his uh, channel I'll tag him uh, down below so you can go check out uh, his channel and he was uh, swatching the new uh, set of color watercolor pencils and so there was like a whole big you know conversation back and forth between um ryan and everybody that was in the chat about you know watercolor and watercolor pencils and technique and i realized that despite the fact that i have watercolor pencils um i have the museum aquarels the derwent watercolor pencils and the tim holtz distress uh watercolor pencils um, and I have used them on projects like off camera. I don't think I have ever done anything with them on camera. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to play around, um, and actually use these, uh, distress watercolor pencils, um, and maybe give you guys some tips and tricks. So I don't know how many parts this video is going to be. We'll see, um, but this is the page that I that I have picked for this video. Uh, Carolina Kubikowska's new uh, new book, uh, Circle of Nature, and I believe this is an aardvark, anteater, aardvark, one or the other. Either way. Uh, so yeah. Um, let me talk about the pencils real quick. So I have all three of the current sets. They come in these tins. Obviously, there's some missing because I've pulled some out. So three sets. I don't believe this is the entire Distress collection. I'll have to look and see if they've released another set with any of the uh, the updates. Um. These pencils are, they're woodless, so this is just like a wrapper that's over, like, over top of this. Um, but yeah, there's no casing on this. They're actually pretty heavy, and I just tried to put one through my Aftmat sharpener, and it did not like it. 
so if I have to sharpen these, I may have to go and grab um, a little hand sharpener. But so I think uh, the first thing that I'm going to start working on is this outer uh, portion right here, uh, the frame. And I am going to use a Tombow water uh, blender to activate this. Um, now I know that this paper will take uh, take water because I have done it in some of Carolina's other books before, but um, for the detail work on this, I'm gonna stick with the blender and I probably won't do a full background. Um, I don't know, we'll see, we'll, we'll roll with it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna go in with my lightest color, this Wild Honey and I am going to just really block in this color. I'm going to be pretty, let me see if I can get you guys in a little closer. Um, pretty light with this. You don't need a lot, but because I want this tone throughout the whole, um, the whole image, this undertone, I'm going to lay this down first so that as I add my other colors, I, um, my uh, my mid-tone and my uh, darker shadow colors so that I keep this wild honey throughout the whole image. That's the nice thing about uh, watercolor pencils. Like, I mean, you can do it with regular pencils as well, but you can um, mix colors just by layering your pencils and then when you activate them with water, you get a whole new color. So, and the other nice uh, thing about working with these is you can just go in and uh, block your uh, block your colors first before you even start activating. And then once you get your first layer down, you can go in and add more over the top if you if you choose to. Now, um, the big difference, obviously, I'll use the ink tents as a uh, comparison here uh, because I know they're pretty popular in the uh, adult coloring world. Is uh, once the ink tents dry, like that's that's it. Um, there's no like hard reactivating those now. I know that there are going to be some people who say, no, that's not true, that's not true. I've, you know, I've reactivated my ink tents. Um, that's more than likely just because you didn't uh, didn't wash out all of your, uh, your pigment. But once the ink tents dry, you can't go back in and, like, really lift them or re-blend re them. Um, and with watercolor... In watercolor pencils, uh, you can pick your pigment back up and uh, reactivate it with more water. And one thing that you want to be careful with when working with um, watercolor uh, and the watercolor pencils in coloring books is if you do decide that you want to go back in and add um, more layers of color over the top, uh, particularly with the pencils, you want to make sure that your paper is dry first before you do that. Uh, because of the paper in the majority of coloring books, if you don't wait until it's dry, and you try and go back in with your pencil, you run the risk of um, pilling or even ripping your paper. And when you add those extra layers back in, you also have to be mindful um, not to scrub at the pigment that you've already laid down. And when I actually get into using the uh, blender uh, blender pen 
I'll talk a little bit more about uh, about that, but yeah, so right now, just blocking in color. You don't need to be super precious about it because we're going to push it around with the water anyways. And so you don't have to cover the entire paper. And especially for this, uh, I had this kind of like antique brass frame in, in vision in my head. So having some variation in uh, the pigment, I think will kind of lend itself to that, uh, that aged look. And as you can see, this is a, a pretty quick process. So it's entirely possible that, oh, let me try to make sure I'm in frame here, uh, that I we might be able to finish this in one video. We'll see. I think the activation um, might take a little bit longer because I, I, I mean, you do have to be a little, a little more mindful when you're uh, working with the, uh, the water or your blender pen or whatever you're using, but we'll get into that when we actually get to that portion of the project. So, as I mentioned, this is my first time using these Distress Watercolor Pencils. I've had them for a while. They were, um, they were on sale at, uh, at Joann's. I can't even remember. I think I was looking for something else, uh, Distress, and, uh, happened to see them and, um, and thought, oh, well, you know, pick them up. And then I played with them a little bit, and then they got stuck in a drawer in my office, and that was, you know, before the uh, the great office purge slash clean out, before they came and put my new window in. And so they got shuffled around. I actually had to dig through my um, dig through my drawers to figure out where where I put them. So this is just, uh, you know, kind of the way that I have chosen to do this with this particular uh, image in terms of like uh, laying, you know, laying your, your colors down. It obviously just depends on what you're, what you're working on and your preferences. Um, and when you're initially putting your pencils down, uh, you don't really need to worry too much about working from, um, you know, light to dark or dark to, to light. If you uh, want to lay your shadow colors down first, uh, you can, um, and then you know lay your your mids and your uh, your lights down. Um, sometimes uh, I like to do that just so that I know where you know my overlap is going to be. Uh, but it's more when you're actually activating your colors that you have to be mindful of working from um, your light into your dark uh, because if you work from dark to light uh, with the watercolors then you will more than likely end up 
completely washing out your highlight by pulling your dark into your lighter areas. So that's something to be um, mindful of. Uh, it really is beneficial when working with watercolors. You want to work uh, light to dark and build up your uh, your values. For this portion, though, uh, not a huge, um, not a huge deal for the actual laydown of the pencils. And then, um, so there is a, a white colored pencil in the set. Uh, I guess I'm just, you know, from using uh, standard watercolors, I don't want to call myself a purist. I don't think that's the, the right term. But, um, you know, when I started learning how to use watercolors and watching other videos, there was kind of this whole like, oh, my God, you know, don't use don't use white watercolor. Um, you know, your, your highlights should be the white of your, of your paper. And so I kind of, you know, rolled along with, with that and really like mixing white into your, you know, your, your paint. Um, I just didn't like the way it looked. And so I kind of go with the whole, you know, you use the white of the paper for your highlights, uh, you know, you get your lighter your lighter values by adding uh, more water, less pigment. And then if you really are doing something where you want a stark white uh, highlight on your image, you can either go in with um, gouache, uh, which is more uh, of an opaque medium, or uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. Or, well, I've never, I know Copic has a, uh, an opaque white as, as well, um, but I've never used it and I can't say for certain whether or not it, it would work the same as like the Dr. P.H. Martins or if it's specifically di designed uh, to be used over top of, um, just like alcohol markers, so, but that might also be, um, be an option, but yeah, that's usually if you want those like really bright white highlights. Um, that is how I would do it. Okay, so just to recap, if we can read this, this was um, a base layer of uh, the wild honey. And next I'm going to go in with uh, just a little bit of rusty hinge. And I'm just going to pick a, a few spots here that I think I want some of this color in. I'm kind of calling this my um, my mid-tone. Actually, you know what? Let me just start up at the, uh, the top here. 
just so I can systematically work work through this. So like a lot of these um, edge like shade lines that uh, Carolina has given us, I'm gonna add some of the uh, rusty rusty hinge. Oh, I missed this little section over here. And then we'll go into like the really like deep little like deep crevices with the uh, the walnut. So let me see where we're at. So we're at about 20 minutes right now, and I would like to at least get to activating this for you. I don't want this video to be, like, insanely long. And then we may end up um, doing our aardvark friend in a second part. We'll see. We'll roll with it. And then we'll see how she goes. It's kind of fun uh, just just being a little messy, you know, like I'm not super worried about how everything looks right now. I'm just scribbling my color where I want it and then I'm going to push it around and hopefully it comes out the way I want. I think it'll be fun. And I did um, test in the back of the book how these uh, handled on this paper. So this book does have a little like media tester sheet. And it did about what I um, what I expected. So, man, these are some beefy, like, these are heavy. These pencils are heavy.
I'm going to add just a little more wild honey in a couple, just a couple spots. Okay, so that was the rusty hinge. And now I'm going to do just a little of the walnut brown. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start activating um, some of this now, and then if I feel like I need to add more at the uh, at the end after uh, after it dries, I'll hit it with the heat tool. So um, again, I'm going to use the Tombow water-based uh, blender for for this, and now this is where we want to be kind of um, mindful of where we start working and where we pull our our color so you want to start with your um your lighter areas and move into your um your darker areas otherwise you will um you'll blot out a lot of your lighter color by pulling the dark into it so this is where we kind of want to be a little bit more uh, precise. And now I did this all in um, in one block, but if you are um, not quite, you know, comfortable with it, you can always. Uh, work in like a smaller like a smaller section so don't you know block your entire image in uh just work in in small uh smaller chunks and uh i've got just a little piece of like scrap over here um so when i'm working in between colors just scribble my uh my blender pen clean And so you can kind of um, also just pounce your uh, your blender pen around a little bit instead of scribbling and dragging. And that also helps to 
um, blend out you know any harsh edges and to keep like nice smooth uh, gradations between your sections and your your different colors And you can also, um, in some of these areas where I didn't get quite as much of a pencil laid on, you can pick the, uh, the pigment up with your uh, water brush, if you're using a water brush, or your uh, blender pen and move it to, to other areas. So sometimes if I have too much pigment in one uh, one spot and I'm not enough in another, I'll take the excess pigment that I've picked up and just um, lay it down in uh, the area where I didn't get as much of the pencil as I would uh, would have liked, rather than trying to go back in with um, with the pencil again. And again, I kind of like some of like the the white um, white space in here. I think it just adds some uh, some interest and some highlight. So I'm not too worried about covering all of the uh, the white space here. And so um, I know I've got some of the walnut up in that corner, so I'm going to be careful not to uh, drag that down too far into my light area. So I like using the uh, blender pen in the uh, the coloring books because, uh, especially on detailed pages like this, I feel like it gives me a little bit more um, control um, and I can be a little bit more uh, precise. And it's less, um, less water um, on the paper.
And if you do find yourself activating um, a darker, like a darker color instead of, you know, your lighter color, it's not a, a not a huge deal. So like I just swiped in this rusty hinge area. You just want to be mindful of like keeping it within um, within itself instead of pulling it. Uh, pulling it out and then you just wipe your blender marker off and keep going because sometimes especially when you're working with um, really you know similar similar colors like that happens it's more about just um, where you pull your where you pull your color Okay, so I'm going to take a quick break and swap out the battery in uh, the camera and then I will be right back and we will hopefully finish up at least the frame. So, Okay, we are back. I had to swap out the battery on the camera and um, I decided I was going to just go in and um, activate the, the rest of this. I feel like you guys watched me do half of it, so, you know, You've seen how the process works. Uh, and so to finish up this, uh, the frame, um, I'm going to go in with the, uh, the walnut in a few spots. Now I'm not going to do the whole thing on camera because this video is already at about 45 minutes. Um, I hit this with my little uh, Ranger heat tool uh, off camera just to to uh, make sure that the paper was dry before I decided to go back in with the, uh, the pencil. And we'll just do a little, uh, a little bit in a few areas over here. And then we'll close this video out and I will come back and do a uh, a part two just so we can finish up our um, little friend here in the center so that will probably be next week sometime okay so just so since I already have pigment down on the page and so I don't lose track of where I'm where I'm adding in the uh, the walnut here I'm just going to lay down some of the pencil and then activate it at this point just because it's easier for me to remember where I'm where I'm putting uh, putting things. Yeah, see, I've already kind of forgot what I did. <laughs> so yeah, at this point, you know, we'll work in uh, in smaller areas, so it's a little bit more of a, a back back and forth. And that just adds some um, some depth, I think, into these little crevices here.
And I think this just adds a nice little, like, antiqued, um, look to our, our frame here. And again, um, I'm just kind of like pouncing the, uh, the marker or yeah, the marker, the blender, blender pen over my color here. And if I get what I feel like is too much pigment, then, uh, I'm just scribbling it off on my little scrap. You just want to uh, be careful not to scrub at it because you'll just reactivate all of your um, your pigment underneath and then um, yeah sometimes then it becomes a big blobby mass now I am I'm working uh, fairly quickly when I do this but that's just because um, I um, I have done this before, so I kind of uh, have an idea of uh, how it's going to work. But if you're newer to this technique and you're just trying it out, I recommend just work you know work at uh, a nice pace. You don't need to be quick with it. Um, I really like that that just like changed the whole like vibe of it adding the, the walnut in so we were working with you know fairly like red reddish orange yellow tones here and the walnut stain is a, a pretty um, brown brown gray brown um, compared to the uh, the other two colors that we were that we were working with but I really think that it um, it just adds a very uh, rustic um, look to it And you'll notice uh, here on like the side here, I left this edge. Um, I don't know how well you can see it on camera. Let me see if I can get that, get this. So like right along here, you'll see that I left uh, the edge white and didn't push the uh, pigment all the way out. So I just kind of used that as a, uh, uh, a paper highlight. And really, like this step, you could also do with uh, just regular pencils. So if you didn't want to go back in and use watercolor on, you know, more watercolor on top, but you wanted to add some uh, depth and some dimension to your uh, to your piece, you could absolutely do this with regular pencils. But again, just make sure that your paper is completely dry before you start trying to do that. Um, Otherwise, you risk ripping it, especially if you're working on a, uh, a thinner paper.
Okay. Uh, lost track of where I stopped. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> man, it's going to be one of those days, you guys. I filmed uh, 10, more, 10 more minutes uh, of this, which um, you guys will have uh, just, just watched. And realized that when I when I stopped to swap my camera battery out, obviously I took my my mic off and I forgot to put it back on when I started up the uh, the recording again. Um, so thankfully, uh, it was sitting on my desk, so it picked it up. Uh, and I don't have to completely like scrap the, uh, that, that section of it. Um, and hopefully when I'm editing this, I will be able to uh, adjust, uh, the audio. So it's going to sound a little funky there for about, uh, or well, by the time you get to this part and I explain it, it will have sounded funky for about, uh, 10 minutes, but I didn't want to scrap the the footage. Uh, <laughs> oy. Oy, oy, oy. But we're almost, we're almost done. Okay, so I think this little section here is going to be the last little bit of the frame that I do on camera. Okay, so let me zoom us out just so we can get a wider view of this before we, before we uh, wrap this up. So this is what we're uh, what we're looking at right now. Um, I probably will do just a little bit more uh, work on this with uh, with some shadow off camera, but I feel like you guys have the gist of how to uh, make this uh, this technique work. It's pretty simple, and once you get into it and you do it a few times, and you get a feel for how the watercolor pencils work. Um, you know, you'll be able to figure out your own, your own technique for it. And, um, yeah, I highly recommend though, uh, finding a section in whatever book that you're working in, either if it's got like a test page in the, in the back or a page that, uh, you're, you know, not like super hyped about or whatever. And, you know, testing out your media and playing with it before you commit to a, uh, a full image and then, you know, um, discovering that maybe that paper just doesn't, doesn't like water media or, you know, um, so yeah, that's my best advice on that. So, uh, we'll do a part two, uh, probably it'll come out, I'd say Monday or Wednesday, Monday or Wednesday, uh, we'll get a, a part two of this and we'll come back and we'll finish our, our bark friend in the inside of this and figure out if we're going to do any kind of a background. So, uh, thank you guys for, uh, checking this video out. I hope you found it, uh, helpful. If you did and you want to see more, please be sure to like sub hit the bell to get notified when I post, uh, future content and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much.